this is one of the spots where they have Olympic sign and as you know Paris is getting ready for the Olympics. There is a lot of things that are changing. In this video I wanted to share 10 practical tips if you're traveling to Paris during the Olympics. Let's go! Let's start with the date. So the main Olympic events are happening from July 26th through the August 11th, Paralympic Games, end of August through mid-September. But the bigger part of all of this is all the installation and prep periods. It started back in March, but the biggest kind of final stage are from mid-June, and this is where you should expect the biggest changes in how the city looks, especially around the iconic sites. There's a lot of things not accessible in the period close to the Olympics and you might not be able to go to some of the iconic places. To be more specific and give you an idea of the places that are affected, the grey ones are the competition sites and those are only accessible if you have a ticket or you work for the Olympics. The red ones are free to access if you're on foot or bicycle, but you cannot go there with car without authorization. To this website that I will link down below. Here you can choose a specific date and see different color-coded areas that are affected and then you can even go down to a specific time. Unfortunately this website is only in French. They have an English version but it wasn't operational so hopefully it will be soon but otherwise it's pretty visual so I think you'll be able to navigate around. I would recommend doing as much on foot as you can, but if it's further out, the public transportation of bikes are probably your second and third best option. And when it comes to public transportation, metro tickets price actually doubles. From the 20th of July, it goes from 215 to 410, which, well, essentially a double. But there are good news. Since a couple of weeks, they released digital metro ticket that you can now save on your iPhone and you can buy tickets in advance and they will still work during this period and you can actually do it even from outside of France and outside of Paris you just have to go on the website that I will link down below you buy the tickets and then you add them to your Apple wallet I'm not sure how it works with the Android probably the same but I haven't tested it myself anyway just check the app and buy tickets in advance before they get it. And one more practical thing about the public transport and yet another website that I will link down below. This one allows you to set notifications, anything happens with the public transportation, write down your email, pick up the areas and you will be notified if something goes wrong. So this way you can anticipate a better route and be on time. Obviously, it's going to be way more people and funny thing is official government website actually recommends to the companies and to workers to take long vacations during the Olympic period. A lot of Parisians are actually trying to run away from the city because even during the normal years, the number of tourists is quite high and it's not the most pleasant period to be in the city. Even outside of the Olympics, July and August are the typical months where people take summer vacations. It's the best time to be on the seaside and kind of the worst time to be in Paris, especially if you get some of the heat waves. And this is going to be my next tip on how to plan for those. Air conditioning is not a thing here. Well, it's a thing in the hotels, but not all hotels. And then if you're booking the Airbnb, chances are very low that you'll have air conditioning. And the summers in Paris, especially end of July and August, can get very hot. It's usually a few days that they call canicule or like a heat wave. But when you get in those in Paris, it's actually not very pleasant. If you still have a chance to book your accommodation, I would highly recommend paying attention to whether or not they have air conditioning because when it gets very warm, the Paris is not the most enjoyable city in the world. Obviously it can change, but as of right now, it doesn't look like the temperature is going to be too bad. Usually the uncomfortable Feeling in Paris starts over 30 degrees Celsius and looking at the calendar as it is, it seems like it's gonna stay under. I would definitely recommend checking this website in advance. I really like this particular one because it's usually pretty accurate with the reality and this would help you better plan for the weather. 
And in this section, I wanted to go through seven sites that are impacted by the construction in preparation for the Olympics. Majority of Paris iconic sites look like this, unfortunately. I will cover some of key things that you should know, but if you want to know more, you can always go to this website that is linked in the description. The version I found was only in French, but you can always use Google Translation if you need to. The good news is that majority of the places and museums would still be open. There are just some specifics to be aware of if you're planning to visit one of those. Starting with Eiffel Tower, obviously this is an iconic site where you would have to book in advance, but with Olympics the rules are a little more strict. Specifically for the period of July 18th to 25th, you cannot access the Eiffel Tower unless you bought e-tickets, the booking is mandatory. Also, it's going to be closed for the three days in July 14, 15 and the 26th. And the prices have recently became higher, 20% higher to be specific. And you would think it's because of the Olympics, but in fact, they're not related, even though the increase happened right before the Olympics. This was a long negotiated decision and these funds would be directed to finance the high maintenance cost for the monument and cope with a number of tourists that come every year. I will link this website in the description so that you can best prepare your visit of Eiffel Tower. Next one is Trocadero. It's one of the main sites for the Paris Olympics and this is how it's going to look when all the installations are complete and this is how it looks today. So this is obviously not the most beautiful angle if you wanted to take this iconic shot. Starting July they also added more restrictions and now you have to line up to be able to access this square. You still can visit this area, just be prepared for a longer wait. If you want to find the best angle to take the picture of Eiffel Tower with the Olympic rings, my recommendation would be going to the bridge. There is this area in the middle where people take photos and though it's very popular among tourists and photographers, you still can find this spot and have a beautiful photo of yourself to remember Paris with the Olympic rings. Next one are the bridges and the riverbank. From middle of June they closed the majority of the riverbank where you could previously walk and now it's been constructed to welcome spectators during the different parts of the Olympics and specifically the Olympics opening ceremony which will be happening on the river. You can still access some parts of the riverbank but the rules are very limited and one of the biggest bridges that are very popular for the photos, the bridge of Alexander III, also has the construction of the seats on the top of it and across the bridge the beautiful invalid also fenced off. The museum remains accessible, it's just a different entrance but you can definitely buy the tickets and go visit it. So this would cover the sites that are most impacted by the construction. I will link the websites in the description so that you have the most up-to-date information while you plan your visit. And to make the most out of your visit, I would definitely recommend focusing on some alternative sites that are not impacted by the Olympics. And I will share those in the next section. When it comes to planning the places, some of the local gems that are less touristy, lesser known, probably be the best places to add to your itinerary. Things like parks, green spaces, kind of hidden gems that still is charming but it's just less iconic. Maybe instead of going to Tuileries Garden next to the Louvre, go to a smaller gardens like Parc Monceau or the Jardin de Plantes that is a little bit off the way garden I'm in now which is Luxembourg garden so very big and very beautiful and this is some other ideas of places you can visit Booking places to eat in advance is probably another advice. Usually in cities like Paris you can always find a restaurant without reservation, but given the number of people coming in, I think it would be advisable to book things in advance. Some of the updates on the airport sites, flying into Orly it's probably the best because they just opened the metro line that goes all the way to the airport. 
It's fast, practical, and also very affordable. Charles de Gaulle didn't get upgrade, unfortunately. You can still take a train that is like a local train called RERB. I'm personally not the biggest fan of it. If you're arriving later at night, I would probably opt for a taxi. And you should know that the official taxi has a fixed price and probably a better option over Uber during the peak periods. Even if you take longer to get into the city, you would still pay a fixed price. Taxi stands and dedicated areas. So if anybody approaches you in the airport proactively, these are not real taxis. Be aware of those and go for the taxi stands. And the number 10, this is obviously a very specific time to visit Paris and if you're coming here you probably want to see how it's different during the Olympics, but you might miss out on some of the iconic sites and so for the next time spring is an amazing time. If you need more tips for what to do in Paris, check out my other videos on the channel or ask some questions in the comment section. I wish you an amazing time in Paris and I will see you in the next one.